All right, folks. Uh, glad to have you back on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Uh, so let's talk about uh, Fit Live Win. We have our segment, which airs, of course, uh, every Monday on the show. Uh, and uh, my next guest, um, well known, you know his music, you know his preaching, but he also uh, went public and talked about uh, what he decided to do when it came to his weight, uh, when it came to uh, dealing with diabetes. Uh, and so, Pastor William Murphy joins us right now. Uh, glad to have you on the show. Are, are you wearing one of them bur damn Burberries you were talking about? <laughs> I mean, you and your pastor Jamal Bryant, y'all were going back and forth about some damn Burberry shirt. I'm like, oh my good rolling that. You know that sound like a little bit of hating going on. There. No, not, I'm not hating. I'm stating. <laughs> I'm not wearing the Burberry tonight. I mean, y'all were going back and forth. He took the Burberry, supposed to lead the Burberry. You finally Man. can fit the Burberry. Man, listen. So you know, we we he comes to my house. He goes through my clothes, and instead of taking the fat clothes, he takes my skinny clothes. So that was that was the argument, and that was the segue rolling, which, by the way, man, thank you for uh, affording me this opportunity to talk uh, to our community, man, about this, uh, this epidemic of diabetes. But that was the segue into me sharing with, um, you know, the people that we influence, the people that follow us. That was how we segued into me talking about uh, having a gastric sleeve, which uh, was a weight loss procedure that helped me uh, roll. And I was uh, right around 280 pounds, and now I'm down to 210. So I've lost 70 pounds, man. And um, I feel just incredible. Uh, my blood sugar is normal. Uh, my blood pressure is normal um i don't feel as heavy or as um lethargic as i was feeling uh because i was able to um make this grown up decision man to do something to help me jump start uh my journey back to uh taking control of my health man and, so and you said look you said i tried i so you said you tried other ways you try to lose weight uh, and you say you know what look I look I had no choice but to do this as opposed to trying to do it the natural way yeah so you know I was walking uh, you know everything people tell you to do uh, to try to lose weight and I had to be honest with myself Roland that I just my lifestyle the pace of my life uh, I just wasn't disciplined enough to drop the kind of weight as quickly as I needed to drop it. And so this afforded me an opportunity. Uh, Dr. Ronald Moore, who's a friend of our family now out of Fort Lauderdale, uh, afforded me an opportunity, man, to uh, jumpstart um, my health journey. And of course, it's, it's afforded me an opportunity to think differently about food, um, portion control, sugar intake. Um, it's given me an opportunity to, to reset my life as relates to how I even think about food and how I use food. And as a result, uh, now I'm, I'm really interested and we're working on, uh, I don't know if you call it a docu-series or a reality show, but we're working on something now that addresses the epidemic of diabetes in the African-American community. And uh, so I, I realized that um, my brothers, one of my brothers actually passed away uh, maybe seven or eight years ago, complications from diabetes. My father has struggled with diabetes for as long as I can remember. And I never had an issue with diabetes until my mid forties. And so now I'm finding myself uh, overweight uh, not really managing my diet the way that I need to, and now having to defend myself against diabetes. And so uh, this was this was an alternative. And of course, um, again, I had an opportunity to do it. I had some enough resource to do it and enough relationship to do it, and I'm feeling so much better, so. Now, now there are other folks who have actually had similar surgery, and they want to keep it quiet. Oh, no, I mean, I, <laughs> I, 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 mean, I, I know a well-known preacher 
um, uh, out of Chicago, had folks sitting here praying for him, uh, oh, and, and, and was making this, and, and people like, did this cancer return? And, and I mean, I remember I, I, mean, I remember I was there, and it was this huge deal. He had a damn surgery. And it was, like, surgery. And it was like, look, bro, I mean, don't, don't, don't sit here and have folk out here, you know, thinking you had cancer, and they praying for your health to return. Because he, he didn't want to tell people that he had the right. weight loss surgery. Right. And you know, we, you know, uh, fake it till you make it. You know, we find that in our community. And I, I felt like, Roland, I had an opportunity to really address something. You know, I'm finding out now that um, the risk of diabetes is between 70 to 80 percent higher in blacks in black communities than it is in, in white communities that we experience uh, diabetes and complications more than white folks. So I'm realizing, now, wait a minute, I have a responsibility to be honest. I mean, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's what the gospel is all about. That's what we do. You know, it, it's not about being perfect. It's about being honest. And, and I felt like I had a responsibility to be honest and say to our community, listen, this was not the lazy way out. Um, this was not the cowardice way out. This it took a lot of work, a lot of research, um, uh, a lot of courage to do this. And of course, you know, after having the procedure, now the the hard work really begins because you know you I know a lot of folks who have had the procedure, and you know you find them three, four, five years later. And they look like they look before they had the procedure. So this is not something that you have and you just, you good for the rest of your life. You've got to maintain the discipline in order to, to, to stay where you are. So, you know, I'm 210 now, brother, but I could be 310 if I don't do the work. And so I felt, you know, responsible to be honest with our community and say to them, listen, I needed something to help me jumpstart the journey. And so that's what we did. And, um, you know, I'm learning again how to, uh, you know, they're laughing at me now because I'm, I'm eating uh, sea bass and salmon <laughs> and, you know, they, they judge me, Roland. And, you know, before I was eating hot dogs and hamburgers right. and pizza and and, uh, man, what I would give for a deep dish pizza right now. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I had, you know, look, uh, look, I, I've had some folks try to act a fool when, uh, when I posted videos of me cooking salmon. And I'm like, first of all, you ain't eating it. So I don't, give a, I don't really care what you think. Uh, man, and, listen. And, 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 and same thing, you know, in terms of, look, a lot of us gain weight. Uh, you know, I've, I'm down 20 plus uh, since COVID. Wow. Uh, and, and the thing is, and the reality is, Again, folks' bodies are different. So I have diabetes right. on both sides of my family. I monitor, right. that, I monitor that closely. Uh, wow. and, uh, and same thing, my blood sugar is normal. Uh, my blood pressure, uh, you know, is, uh, you. is 118 over 65. Uh, so, you, but the thing is, I'm constantly getting it checked. And that's the other thing, because a, wow. a lot of folk walk around and they don't know. Uh, questions uh, on Macongo, uh, your question for Pastor William Murphy. Yes. First of all, I, I really want to co commend you on, on your honesty in everything that you're doing. And one of the questions that I would like to, uh, no doubt, uh, one of the questions I would like to ask is, for people who are considering this surgery, what are some of the immediate steps you need to take after the surgery? Is it, is it a, a, an immediate diet change, like it's immediate, you know, salmon as opposed to the pizza is, is, is or is it more of a gradual thing because i think people are so caught up in the quickness of the surgery they think it's right. like an instant switch right it, well you know thank you for your question man it's it's it, it's it, it's immediate like um you know some people ask me well do you can you eat this or can you eat that this procedure is such that you could try to eat whatever you want to eat but your body will tell you no. Like, I, I can eat something right now, and my body won't hold it. I'll, it'll, it'll come back up. And so it forces you to think differently about food. It, it forces you to eat different. It forces you to pace yourself. It forces you, um, you know, to cut back on 
carbs and starches and like right now I'm not eating a lot of bread right now you know I'm I, I can eat some bread but I can't eat a whole lot of bread so now what I'm doing is I'm developing a habit where it's not necessarily a crash diet but it's my life diet it's 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 how I'm learning uh, to use food now and not abuse food so uh, the, the change was immediate. Yeah. Julian. Brother Bishop, first of all, congratulations. You look fantastic. Uh, so congratulations you. to you. <laughs> now, I want Thank to ask, I have a couple of colleagues who've had the sleeve, and most of them, uh, their health plan covered it, but the health plan forced them to go through a period of rigorous counseling, et cetera, yeah. beforehand. Did yes. you do that? How long were you in counseling? Yeah, well, uh, praise God, I, uh, we were able to do it without having to include the uh, services. Now, of course, I do know um, some other folks who had to go through counseling, and I would recommend the counseling uh, because, again, it's an entire mental shift that you have to make as relates to how you think about food and eating. Because the reality is, many of us are using food as an emotional crutch and, and not as a means of nourishment. And so you, you needed the entire, um, uh, the counseling piece, the therapy piece, because it helped you to reset your thinking as relates to food. So I didn't have that experience where I had to go through the counseling. But of course, with uh, the, the counsel of my primary physician, uh, Dr. Sharika Newman, and uh, some other folks in my circle who had some experience with the procedure, I sort of had a jump start and an advantage uh, as relates to the mindset after having the procedure. So, and I would recommend anybody who uh, is overweight and starting to have uh, those medical issues like diabetes, hypertension, some of those other issues, I would recommend that you go to your healthcare provider because there's a huge possibility that it is covered in your plan. All right, then. Yeah. Pastor William Murphy, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I, I will tell folks if, if y'all want if y'all want to get jump started uh, on on working out, uh, y'all just put on a praise break, uh, and, uh, and 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 that, that that'll get you going. Uh, Man, listen, listen, Roland. Let me let me thank you again for this opportunity, and let me tell let me tell the listeners on the fourth of December. Uh, you just mentioned uh, one of the records from my last record, Settle Here, but on the fourth of December. We're recording the new record, Roland. You're gonna love it. It's called Worship and Justice, and uh, one of the, one of the the title track, the first line says, "You can't have worship if you don't have justice." And uh, I'm I'm gonna leave you with that. And it ends with no justice, no peace. So, Roland, well, thank first, you, man. Well, first of all, that that's that's a great day to do it. Your color scheme on that day. Uh, it should be uh, black and old gold, considering uh, that it will be the 115th anniversary, December 4th, uh, Man, of, come of, on. of the only <laughs> of the only real fraternity uh, that exists, uh, and that is uh, Alpha Phi Alpha no Fraternity game, Incorporated. So you know, and I know your buddy, uh, Pastor Jamal Bryant. Uh, belongs and to the, Bishop McKissick, who, who was in Omega. Right. They, they have a whole lot to say about that. Both of them don't belong to youth groups. <laughs> they, they're youth groups. <laughs> but they know. Rolling? They, they know. I'm not in it. I'm they not. know they have to bow down, always bow down, and always they got to say, who's your daddy? And that's Alpha. Uh, so, Rolling, so, ro on, my, rolling on the show that I'm on, really? I'm just yes, <laughs> yes. So, so <laughs> let, let your dear friends know that, that you chose the correct date on which to record uh, your new Man, album. This... Uh, I will be doing some R&R &R, uh, on that day uh, in Hawaii, uh, relaxing. Wow. Uh, but trust me, I, wow. will, I will let everybody know uh, that uh, Alpha will be reigning supreme on that day. And, and even when I'm out from the show, uh, there'll be a guest host 
uh, on that, uh, on, let's see, I think December 3rd is a Friday. It, yeah, it's a yeah. Friday. It's all good. There will be a video that will be left with instructions <laughs> on that day. Pastor Murphy, uh, I appreciate it, my brother. Thanks a lot. Man, we love you and we appreciate you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. You're making a huge difference in our community. We don't know what we do without you, man. We love you and we're praying for you, okay? I appreciate it. Thank you very much, sir. All right, folks, back to our Goldmark Unfiltered video in just one moment. This weekend for the Bayou Classic, broadcasting live in partnership with Coca-Cola, Friday and Saturday. You do not want to miss it. Uh, so Black Star Network will be on the scene. That's right, covering the coaches' luncheon on Friday. We'll be broadcasting Friday night. Then, of course, uh, we'll be broadcasting from the Fan Zone. Uh, there's a parade Saturday morning, broadcasting that. Plus, from the Fan Zone, in addition... We'll be broadcasting the halftime. That's right, y'all. Don't worry about the rest of these folk. Don't worry about it. NBC doesn't show it. We'll be showing you the halftime show right here on the Black Star Network.